we'll just dive right on in. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, evolving communion. And the river has continued with communion uh, during the pandemic, while Foundry 414 has taken a break during, during this COVID time. And this has given us some pause to think about why we talk, why we take communion and how to engage in this practice more authentically. And usually when we bring up the topic of communion, the first thing that comes to mind is the Last Supper. And I'd like to take a look at the story uh, from Luke 22. So it says, then he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. Then he said, take this and share it among yourselves. For I will not drink wine again until the kingdom of God has come. He took some bread. He gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took another cup of wine and said, this cup is the new co covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. And so there is a lot to unpack there. Um, Christina Kaiser and Christina Roberts will talk about bread and wine elements of communion in a moment. But as we begin, I'd like to focus our attention on the end of verse 19, which says, do this uh, in remembrance of me. And so this statement from Jesus makes me wonder, what exactly are we remembering? Are we remembering Jesus's death or is there something else Jesus wants us to remember? And since Jesus's death and the cross is often referenced when taking communion, I think it's important to take a few moments to talk about a teaching that has influenced most of us in some way or another called the substitutionary atonement. And it's a heady topic. So I'd like to share a short video from another author and theologian. His name is Greg Boyd, and he does a great job of succinctly talking about this. It's about four minutes and then after he shares, we will open it up for discussion and reflection together. So this is Greg Boyd. Um, so I think my way into, here, I'll wait till we get that, um, into the evolving communion conversation is two concepts that um, I'm sitting with, which is both sacrament and breaking bread. And so um, I actually grew up in a Greek Orthodox church and for us, Holy Communion was the pinnacle of our liturgy each week. And my church growing up, it was, you know, we had stained glass windows and a beautiful choir and candles and incense. And so it was a very aesthetically engaging experience. And um, we didn't actually frame communion as, you know, kind of what Chris is mentioning with the sin aspect, but it was more this idea of like being one with God, um, being in union with Christ. Um, and from the time you're a baby, um, 40 days old is your first communion. And so you're part of the church community. And so I remember even as a child, like times where I would take communion and, um, I don't even know that I could put words to it, but it just felt like this, um, this peace or this presence or this holiness with me as I was taking communion. And so just a very beautiful, beautiful sacramental experience. Um, that being said, as I got older, um, I had to grapple with, um, like we had a common cup with one spoon that everybody used. And I reached a point where like, it's just like germs kind of got to me and the idea of like sharing that with everybody. Um, so that actually became an obstacle for me in, in engaging in communion with that way. If I'm, if I'm being honest, like that was kind of a, a block for me. Um, even though I appreciate the symbolism, uh, the germs kind of got to me. Uh, then in high school, I attended a more charismatic type church and they had um, an altar area with kind of these individual cups and, and pieces of bread. And so during the music part of worship, you could go up and um, kneel at the altar. And, and it was kind of also beautiful to watch people having a moment with God where they were kneeling and praying, um, taking communion. And there were multiple people up at, at any given time doing that. Um, and again, I, I really appreciated that. Um, but then that being said, after we started our church, um, 
I reached a point where I'm like, okay, is a, a little thimble full of juice and a cracker really what Jesus had in mind when he invites us to remember him and to take communion? And so this led me to thinking on the idea of breaking bread and what that means in our Christian context. And this is something that we find in the book of Acts, the early church partook in the breaking of bread. And we read this in Acts 2, 42 and 46. It says this, they, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And so uh, again, as Chris shared earlier, the first a representation of communion happened at a supper, right at the last supper and seeing kind of this in acts where people were eating in homes and breaking bread. Um, our church decided to share an actual meal together in the church and then to include communion as part of that time. Cause that just kind of felt to me a little bit more authentic as to what I was experiencing in the scripture. So we would have tables and at the center of the table would be our elements in kind of individualized cups. And um, if you wanted to partake in that, we would sing and pray. And there was a moment to, to do that. Um, so then during COVID, um, we've taken a break from communion in our church because I wasn't quite sure how that would translate into a Zoom context. And so when Christina shared that you all at the river have been continuing with communion, I was like, oh, I need to think about this. I'm not quite sure what I think about that um, on a Sunday morning. And um, it's actually been surprising as we've been talking about this idea of communion, a lot's been coming up for me in this, you know, we talked about last week, this, our, our theme for Lent is evolving faith. So kind of the broader topic of evolving faith and having to revisit communion and what I think about communion has been very generative for me this week. And um, actually um, I had an interesting conversation with Chris and Christina preparing for today. And afterwards I found myself like YouTubing some of my Greek Orthodox theology that I haven't really revisited in a very long time. And so it's kind of re-engaged me in some new ways. And so, um, which I appreciate, because I think that's the whole point of these different aspects of our faith that are evolving. It's opportunity for us to reconnect with, with God in some new ways, with people, and with some of these ideas that we have grown up with. So, um, and I say that today because as we're talking about communion, maybe there's others here who have had childhood experiences of communion or adult experiences of communion that we bring into the conversation today. So. Um, Christina's going to share in a moment um, another scripture for us, and then when she's done, we will open it up for some more conversation, but I just wanted to name kind of my own personal narrative around Evolving Communion. And so thank you, Christina. Thank you for sharing all that. And it's so true. As the three of us have been reflecting together in conversation, it really has been amazing to me just to look at the variety of ways that communion happens in our world and has occurred and will, you know, will something else will happen in the future. And it's been interesting to reflect on this idea that in reality, communion, it, there's two things going on at once. There's an individual experience and at the same time there's a collective experience. And we've like Christina was saying, we've been talking about this a little bit with the evolving faith. Last week we looked at Acts 15 and we saw that there was this evolution of thought. And communion too has that same sort of evolution of thought occurring even as the three of us are talking and we're seeing different examples of it in scripture. Luke 22 kind of shows us one thing. Acts chapter 2 that Christina shared shows another. And so to continue thinking about all of this. There's a moment in John 6, which I also find fascinating, because as Jesus talks, he kind of manages to offer up this historical context and then kind of a metaphor of himself as bread. And so both the communal and the individual, it's all intertwined in the midst of what he's doing there. So in John 6, Verses 31 through 35, we hear, Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. And then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. 
Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. And so I find this so amazing. When you take it in reverse, you start at the end, verse 35, Jesus says, it's me. I am the bread of life. I am the source of never-ending nourishment. When you're in communion with me, hunger, thirst, not even a thing. And so there's this individual nature a bit. Something about us as individuals receives this nourishment and this fulfillment from communion with Jesus. And then if we keep backing up, verse 33 says, God's been doing this though since the days of our ancestors. This bread, this ever fulfilling source, it's been flowing from heaven just as far back as you can imagine. Even as far back as when the Israelites were eating manna from heaven in the desert. And so that brings in that communal nature of a group of people that we're all here relying on that sustenance together. And so whether we're talking about a long time ago or we're talking about right now in this moment, whether we're thinking about the individual context or the collective one, Jesus seems to point us to this relational experience, this thing that was going on at the end of Boyd's video there. And he seems quite confident that what we experience in that relationship, it is going to be fulfill fulfilling. It is going to be reliable. And when you tie it together, this picture starts to emerge, this experience of giving thanks and receiving supernatural sustenance. It's been a part of the human experience for ages, in many forms, but always there. And so maybe we can open the floor for discussion again. Christina was talking a bit about communion as sacrament, as well as communion as an act of breaking bread together. And throughout scripture, we also see these passages that refer both to the individual as well as to the community. So it'd be great for all of us to get to talk together as we're all here taking all of this in. What comes to mind for you? Are there things that you relate with? Are there things that you wonder about? It would be great to hear all of you as well.